When a bike manufacturer sends us out one of their fancy pants exotic bike launches, we've got a fairly obvious task in hand, which is to find out as much about the bike as possible, given the short time frame that we've got with it. Now, it really, really didn't take long to figure out that the Thruxton R was just a gorgeous creation from Triumph. But whilst a bike launch is always specific about that bike model, the journalists, the video bloggers, the guys and the girls that go out there to ride the bike are also thinking in the back of their head, what is this thing gonna be pitched up against when it finally goes on sale in the UK? Well, to me, there was only ever really one bike that this thing was gonna go up against, and it's just as fast. It's got a very similar combination of old school styling and modern touches, and it's also got that lovely quality of finish like the Thruxton R, and of course, it's BMW's R19. Now, with two such stunning machines, it felt only right to come to an equally pretty location to film. So, we're here in the Lake District with our friends Aaron and Jeff from Knox, who are not only gonna help us ride the bikes, but they're also gonna film us filming the review so it gives you an insight into how one of these videos is actually shot. I can see Aaron is kind of dribbling over the Thruxton behind the camera. I've not ridden the BMW before so we're going to go out now and find some nice roads to ride. So if you want a Thruxton in your life, this is not the cheapest way to go about it because they also do a base model which comes in at £1,300 cheaper. But by the time you consider the fact that this comes with better suspension, it comes with better brakes, better tyres and generally just cooler trinkets, you'd be sort of mad not to go for the R. And not mad just because those are nice things to look at and nice things to have, but also because they complement that nice little engine which is an absolute peach in the Thruxton. Now I say little, but actually it's a brand new 1200cc water-cooled parallel twin unit. It makes just under 100 horsepower at just under 7,000 RPM. And it's got this really, really nice mixture of torque down low and then power up top. And to be honest, the whole bike feels quite contradictory in many senses because it's got that classic look to it. It feels quite retro to ride in some ways, and yet superficially, it's a very modern bike. You know, you take the Olin suspension, you take the really high spec Brembo brakes, the very new Pirelli tires, and then those show a big piston forks. Those forks aren't particularly revolutionary, but they were a few years ago. They're on the current Gixxer now, they're on the old ZX10. So it's a proper performance machine, and it's fantastic to ride when we rode it in Lisbon. Uh, for the launch and then also today it's just been a nice reminder of what a cool bike this really is it sort of does it all it's very fast through the corners it's fantastic to look at it sounds great and then even though when you look at it it looks like a proper racing machine it's got the clip-ons everything feels quite solid it's actually not too uncomfortable the seat is very hard but because the seat's quite low actually the riding position isn't too uncomfortable now because we've gone for the higher spec Thruxton, it's only right that we do the same with the R9T. So that is the R9T Sport. And like the Thruxton, also comes with some higher spec stuff. But it's not the same as the Thruxton in the sense that most of the upgrades that you do get are kind of less performance focused. So on the Sport, you get heated grips, you get that cafe racer style seat cowl, you get the brushed aluminium tank, but then the performance focus aspect of it is that you get a high rise Akrapovich exhaust, which just makes the bike sound so good and complements again the engine, which is also a 1200cc unit, it's a box twin obviously, and it makes just a bit more power than the Thruxton. That's about 110 horsepower. And to be honest, even though they both look very retro, both those machines are properly quick. So when we first jumped on the bikes today, I had a feeling that it was gonna be really difficult to differentiate the bikes in terms of which one I prefer more and how they feel. But actually, despite the fact that they both look fairly classically styled and they both fit into that retro class, these two bikes are so different. They really are chalk and cheese. Aaron's been riding the Thruxton a lot today and he prefers that bike. I actually prefer the R9T. Now, the reason for that is, personally, I think the Thruxton, when you're riding it, it, uh, it feels totally different to the BMW in the sense that it feels quite heavy. 
through the corners. It feels like it wants to go straight a lot of the time. It's got that cafe racer vibe to it. It's got the clip-ons, it's got very short bars. So you kind of, and, and it's also got a very short tank. So you naturally want to kind of tuck your elbows in, duck down and, and sort of pin it through a straight line. And it, it doesn't really want to track around corners and flick from side to side. It certainly feels top heavy when you're doing that. Now the BMW is, is kind of the opposite. It doesn't feel quite as stable as the Thrux and it doesn't feel like it's got that weight behind it to keep it on track, but it feels a lot, lot more uh, nimble, you know, through the corners. It's much easier to flick from left to right. It's got wider bars. It's got a more upright riding position. And you've also got a bit more ground clearance on the pegs as well. So it's just um, through the corners, it feels like a more nimble machine. And it also feels like the type of bike where if you're in a town, it would probably be easier to sort of flick it through traffic and navigate and, and, and filter basically. So despite the differences between these two bikes and the way that they handle, they've also got some real big similarities. And I think most noticeably, it comes down to the quality of finish that they both have. So if you park them up side by side, they're quite similar in some senses. Like, for example, you've got the brushed metal exhaust, the brushed metal casings on the Triumph. You've got the brushed aluminium tank on the R9T. Then you get really high quality suspension on both bikes, very sticky tyres on both bikes, spoke wheels on both, very high uh, powered brakes on both. Noticeably on the Thruxton, you've got really powerful Brembo brakes on there. I think the biggest difference really with these two bikes in terms of how they feel handling aside comes down to actually the differences in drive. So you get a normal chain drive on the Thruxton, whereas on the BMW, it's got shaft drive. And it's not that the shaft drive feels snappy, it's just that because with the shaft you've either got drive or you don't, it just feels very immediate in its power delivery. It doesn't have the give that a chain does. On an electronics front, they're also quite different because on the Thruxton you get riding modes and then you get a traction control incorporated into that riding mode as well. Whereas on the BMW, you don't get anything. There's no quick shifter, there's no riding modes, there's no different fuel maps, there's no traction control, there's no anything. It's just how it should be to me. It feels a bit more manly, it feels more turnkey and, and go. And for a bike like this, which is retro themed, it just kind of fits a bit better to not have any of that electronic stuff, which I would probably just turn off anyway. I'm not gonna get into the topic of styling too much because I know that just comes down to personal taste, but a few things I will mention is I know that a lot of people don't like that rear fender on the Thrux, and that's just one of those annoying things that comes down to Eurocrats. You know, you need the number plate extending over the back of the rear wheel, so they kind of had to put it there. Something I hate on the Thruxton is the press finish on the tank. It just doesn't look up to scratch for what this bike costs. And another thing, a bit more personal, is the indicators. I'm sure some people like them, I just don't like those big, bulby orange ones. Now, on the R9T, if you compare tanks, press finish on that one, whereas you get a gorgeous aluminium weld on the R9T, and it just, it just really lives up to the finish that you'd expect from a bike like this. Another thing that's a bit fiddly on the BMW in it, I know why they've done it, because it comes down to trying to give it that analog, old school styling, is the, the dash is, is basically really hard to read at speed. It sort of shakes around a bit, but the actual numbers on the dash are absolutely tiny. So if, you, if you're wearing a dark visor, if you've not got perfect vision or something along those lines, it's really hard to just take a quick glance down at it and see what speed you're doing. So as I've discussed, these bikes are very, very similar, but they're also very different. And that's why it makes it quite hard to pick a winner because they're just suited for different things. So I think the best way to choose which one I'd rather have is to talk about which one I'd rather have depending on the scenario. So I think if this was the second bike and I wanted it for the weekend and I wanted it to look cool, I'd probably go for the Thruxton. It ticks all the boxes, it goes quickly, it sounds nice, but I think living with it every single day, I'd start to get a bit, not bored with it, but you know, the seat is extremely hard. It's a real pain to do U-turns as Aaron found today when we were looping around to take different shots for the camera. It's just very heavy and difficult to turn. The R9T on the other hand, if I wanted a bike that was my primary bike, I also wanted it to look good and I was going to use it every single day to commute, to do long distance, that is the bike I'd have because it's got the heated grips as standard, it's a bit more comfortable, it's certainly got a more comfortable riding position, it's got a very, very tractable engine and then on top of that I really can't see any downsides to it in terms of the quality of finish anyway. The R9T surprised me today, I, I thought I was going to be lusting over the Thruxton at the end of the day but it just really, really has grabbed me that bike. The Aqua Povich on it, it's a bit unfair because that one's just got a stock can, but the Aqua sounds absolutely awesome. Every time you start that bike up, it, it shakes itself into life in, in a really good way. It just feels characterful. You can't help but blip it when you're going through towns. It's very comfortable. It's extremely fast. It's got 110 horsepower. It really will keep up with the best. And it's just a lovely, lovely bike to own. So if I was going to buy one as my primary bike and also something to just dribble out over the weekends, 
I'm really sorry because I'm British and I want to say the Thruxton, but I'd be choosing the BMW.